everyone and welcome back to another absurd heroine video. So today I'm going to do something wild. I'm actually going to climb the ladder. Um, so because um, this particular deck that I um, didn't, I did not build this deck myself. I'm going to admit it to you. I net decked this deck. I was looking for some ideas and this one was really cool. And usually if I look online and I look for ideas, which I do a lot, by the way, I don't just come up with all the brews by myself. I come up with a lot of them by myself, but sometimes I'll just like be perusing if I don't have any particular ideas that fancy me. I'll look around and see if anybody else has come up with cool ideas. But usually I will take those ideas and build them into my own kind of creation. This one is different and this happens sometimes. I come across a deck that I think is very interesting and it is good and... I don't have really any improvements to make, maybe a few here or there, but for the most part, I leave it as it is. Um, I don't know who made this deck. I think I, got, I actually got this deck from uh, Untapped GG. I was just like looking around to see what people were playing. And most of it's like all of the meta decks and you're like, whatever, I don't really care about that too much. But this one was cool. And I was like, all right, I'm going to try playing this deck. And I had so much fun playing this deck. I was like, I need to make a video out of this deck. So this deck is too good to play in the casual queue. I would not subject the casual queuers to this, this deck. <laughs> so I'm going to play it on the ladder. Uh, what is this deck? You may be asking because the name is cut off by the untapped UI here. It is Mardu Doom. So this is Mardu Yorion Doom. Um... Which is painful for me to say that I find this really fun because I actually really don't like Yorion decks. Like Yorion companion decks are kind of like my least favorite decks because they're just long and they take a long time to kill you and you're just like, oh god. But And it's that, that's exactly what this is and I apologize to everybody for that. I'm a traitor, I know. Anyway, yes, Yorion, Mardu Doom. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but it is fun. <clears throat> It is actually really, really fun. So let's go ahead and take a look at the pieces that we have here. So we have Yorion, of course. Um, it is our companion. Then we have Glass Casket, Birth of Miletus, Lethoform Blight, which is cool. This draws you a card, and it can also fix your own mana if you don't want to fix your opponent's mana. If your opponent's playing mono something, then I would put it on one of their lands, maybe. I mean, it doesn't really matter. You'd probably put this on your own lands. That's, that's usually what I've ended up doing. Because very rarely is, is this going to be bad for an opponent. Usually it's good for them if you give them the ability to fix their own mana. Then we have Omen of the Forge. Golden Egg. Omen of the Sun. So you have, you have the Omens. Uh, Skyclave Apparition, which is just like an incredible card. Everybody knows how good this card is. Elspeth's Nightmare, which is another really good saga. So we've got two really good sagas. Treacherous Blessing. And I just love, I love Treacherous Blessing and Doom. Um, there's something about this card that's just like, it's a gamble that sometimes it just really pays off. Sometimes it doesn't, some, but sometimes it does. And you're like, heck yeah. So yeah, I really like Treacherous Blessing. Then Archon of Sun's Grace. And for all of you who know me, you know, I love enchantments and like all of these are enchantments except for maybe Golden Egg, you know, Glass Casket and Skyclave Apparition. So many enchantments and I just love it. So Archons of Sun's Grace, Archon of Sun's Grace makes Pegasus creatures. And then um, gives them all lifelink. It's just really, really good. Really good card. Then, of course, we have Doom Foretold. And Doom Foretold is another card that I just really love. I I love this card. <clears throat> Even when people are playing against me. I don't like Yorion. Doom Foretold. Hmm. Right? Yorion. Doom Foretold. That's what it is for me. But anyway. <laughs> Elspeth Conquers Death. Another just amazing saga. Uh, and then we have Amaria's Call as our... Um, land, dual face land card, which is something that we'll probably be playing quite a bit, actually. It's kind of like one of our win conditions, right? So that's the whole deck, and I'm sure you've seen most of these, uh, usually just not with Omen of the Forge. Omen of the Forge is like our only red mana source thing, but it's good, right? Deals two damage to any target, and we just bounce it, right, with Yorion. It's good. It is strong, and I really enjoy playing this deck, and I hope it will perform well for you all today as I climb the ladder. Let's get out of bronze, shall we? All right. We can keep this. We can keep this because we have an egg and a lithoform blight, right? So that'll fix the mana for us. What did I say? We're going to be usually casting this on our own lands to help fix us. All right. 
We're playing up against another Yorion deck. Ugh. This is just gonna be nails in the eyeballs, isn't it? <laughs> okay, Charming Prince. You got it, boss. Will Needle um Needle Verge pathway here? For red and golden egg. There's a land. The tapped land. It's unfortunate, but it's a land. And we can glass casket this. Is that what we're going to do? Pretty much the only thing that we can do, actually. It is the only thing that we can do. So we're going to do that. Oh, you're going to negate our glass casket, huh? Sure. Whatever you want, bro. We're gonna want another white mana source here, probably. What makes you think that they'll counter our Archon of Sun's Grace? We're gonna cast it anyway. Hello! Hi. They didn't have anything. They didn't even have an omen. I guess that makes us feel a little better. They didn't do anything that whole entire turn. That's great. Totally cool. Um... I guess we'll Elspeth's Nightmare. Maybe we'll let the form blight first. That one. We don't use red very often. You want to counter that? They didn't even bring Yorion into their hand. Sure. The will Elspeth's Nightmare. What can they cast for two with Flash? Nothing. Nothing that we care about. <laughs> Nothing that we care about. Just because you can negate something doesn't mean that you should. Ooh. Wow. I mean... Hmm. <laughs> two Dream Trawlers and a Yorion. I mean, I think we're just going to get rid of Elspeth Conqueror's death, right? And attack. And bring Yurion into our hand. Bam. Then we can Omen of the Sun. On their turn. If they decide not... I mean, if... Okay. I mean, that works for me. That makes me... I'm very happy to see that. <laughs> I'm not a fan of long, drawn-out Yorion versus Yorion games, so cool. Yes, I think so. Even though we don't have any enchantments for our Archon of Sun's Grace, I still think that this is really good, right? Turn one, Savai Triome. Turn two, Golden Egg. We're going first up against a Liger Zero. What do we have? Evolving Wilds? Okay. Me a little nervous. That can be okay. So we're up against um landfall, right? Oros landfall. Okay. Hmm. I think we just steal that. Or we just kill it. Yeah, we just kill it. And I think we just do that now, actually. Die. You wanna cycle something? Give it plus one, plus one? Sure. You do that. You do that thing, friend. Next turn we can Archon of Sun's Grace. Really matters, because we don't have anything to benefit off of. <clears throat> Reptilian Reflection. Cool. Alright, so we want this one. It can be white. I don't think it really matters. Rar. It's a lion. It makes a lion sound. Why does it do that? Why does it do that? 
It's kind of weird. Cycling is a deck type that I'm I'm not a huge fan of. Mm -hmm. We're gonna be getting rid of that with this guy clay that version. No blocks. No blocks, friend. I've just never been able to make cycling work for me. It's one of those things, like, I'm sure everybody's seen this before, right? Where you play against a particular deck type, and it always beats you. Like, always. But the moment you try to play it, you just get destroyed. By everything. And you can't, like, make it work for you. And that's cycling for me. I tried my darndest to play cycling. And it just... Never worked for me. It never... It never worked for me. Okay, Doom Foretold. That's, uh, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good draw. I enjoy this. I enjoy this draw. A Flourishing Fox. You will see your end. You will see your doom. Flourishing Fox. Watch them Zenith flare us off the face of the planet. <clears throat> Boom. Uh, yeah, I think we'll just pass. We're gonna keep the Samaria's call in our hand. They have a lot of cycling cards in their graveyard, but we have life gain, right? So it's not, it's not over yet. They can't cast this turn. They can cast the Zenith, um, Zenith Flare next turn. And at most it will be hitting for 13. Okay. Archon of Sun's Grace. I mean. That will be going away very soon, friend. So... We can Archon of Sun's Grace, or we can just Yorion. Not- we can't just Yorion. We have to bring it into our hand first. I, th I think we're gonna do that. We're just gonna be safe and do that. They have to sacrifice their Banishing Light. Which is fine by me. Get our Archon back. They still can't hit us for enough, right? Sorry, the sun is like... Gently creeping <laughs> across the room. I need... I need some stuff. I need some, um... Blinds on my windows. Mm-hmm. How dare you take my golden egg! My food artifact. Drenath healer. Sure. Okay. Interesting. I don't think that's the right call, but it's that's up to them. Alright, so we're going to be sacrificing our other golden egg here. Cancel. Sacrificing it to Doom Foretold, not to us, to eat it. Okay. Uh, and this can be another black mana source, I think. We can Yorion. Hmm. I guess we attack first, huh? Very interesting. They're... Naya? Cycling? Alright, so we are going to Yorion. There's very little that they can do about this. That one, and that one. And we'll get their lantern, I guess? Um, we'll deal two damage to that. 
And then we'll get there later. turn. Yeah, we get to draw a card. We get a dude. They can't do anything. We could have just hit their face. But we can hit their face with this one. Alright, so they have 14. Not all of them are cycling, though. One, two, three are not. They can hit us for 11. Which is a fair amount. That is a fair amount. <laughs> All right. What's well, Amaria's call here? I mean, they probably have like a board wipe, right? That's my guess, is they have a board wipe. They have Zenith Flare here, and then maybe a board wipe is one of their other cards. Which will take us a little while to recover from, but we do have a Castle Lock Thwain. We have a couple really good cards in our hand. And we can pop these Omens of the Forges. Oh wait, no. Oh, okay. They, they must not have had their Zenith Flare. Okay, that works for me. That works for me. Bam. Bronze tier 2, baby. You know we mean business now. Yeah, this looks pretty good. Turn 1, Savi Triome. Turn 2, Omen of the Forge or Birth of Miletus. Probably Birth of Miletus. I guess it depends on what they, what they play. Opponent is going first. So if they're, like, very aggro-y, we might end up omening of the Forge. But Birth of Miletus is good against aggro decks, too, so kind of a toss-up. We'll see. We'll see what they play on their first turn. Their first two turns. Eep. Mm-hmm. Very well. Fireblade Charger, it is. Doom Bordold's gonna be good here. Alright. So we'll probably just birth of Miletus here. Honestly. Make a wall, gain two life. <clears throat> that kind of stuff. Sure. So, Omen of the Forge next turn? Very well. Yeah, I think we will Omen of the Forge here. Killing this Phoenix of Ash. We probably... Are we gonna... Doom Foretold's the turn after that. We might not Doom Foretold the turn after that. We might just Archon of Sun's Grace. Life Gain is very strong against these kind of decks. That's fine. For now. So the Omen. Kill you. Gain two life. And Archon of Sun's Grace. They might have a way of getting rid of this, which will be unfortunate, obviously. They can't bring back their phoenix yet. We're getting a lot of lands. <laughs> a lot of lands here. Skyclave Apparition will be good against Bonecrush Giant if we don't decide to Doom Foretold for whatever reason. Very slowly, the sun is creeping onto my shoulder. I apologize. I apologize for the sun. Fervent Champion. Okay. Sorry, I have like these little things that kind of help with the sun. There we go. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll block here. 
Will we block here? No. We're not gonna block. Ow. Another Skyclave apparition. Okay. So I'll make black, and I think we will Doom Foretold. Okay. Well, I guess that works. That's an early concede, I feel. Great. This is a great hand. Plenty of things to do. Some removal. Yeah. We'll keep it. Sevi Triome, turn one. Turn two. Not sure what turn two here. Maybe Omar the Forge to get rid of this human. Esky human. Obosh the Prey Pair, sir, eh? Interesting. I like it. I like it. Alright, so I think we're gonna birth here. Birth of Miletus. Get eight planes. We have plenty of mana for now. <clears throat> Next turn. We can Lithoform Blight, but we'll probably Omen of the Forge. No. We want to use all of our mana, so maybe even Skyclave Apparition. On the uh, Love Struck Beast, too. Right. Okay. Rampy Ramp. Some Ramparoonies here. So we're. Do we want to just get our Yuri on? Probably not, because we have a full hand anyway. We'll just Omen of the Sun <clears throat> to kill this human if they come in with it. Which I wouldn't imagine that they would come in with it. We are not going to have an, uh, a way of getting rid of this Obosh. Right. We Omen of the Sun. And then we Archon of Sun's Grace. No text. We can block out Lovestruck Beasts for a while. Ooh, Terror of the Peaks. That's a problem. That is a problem. Alright. Golden Egg. We might want to pull our Yuri on, I think. No attacks. I think we need to Omen of the... F if Terror of the Peaks attacks, we can Omen of the Forge and then block with a Pegasus. Oh no, another one. Bad. Bad news bears, everybody. need a doom foretold I think hmm um, so unfortunately Skyclave apparition won't help us here egg to see if we can get a doom foretold something along those lines which we didn't so we're gonna be getting hit for for a lot here unfortunately Terror of the peaks is gonna hit us for 10 and then if they bring out another terror of the peaks then another 10 not my favorite not gonna lie not my favorite And Terror of the Peaks. Nasty stuff. We do have some ways of dealing with it, though, if we can just get them. We need to draw Elspeth Death. Elspeth Conquers Death. Take care of that. Heartbeat. Because we could Elspeth Conquers Death, one of our Terror of the Peaks, and then we can Yorion to do it again. Basically. 
Ja. Yep. They have another land. We're just dead. Right, because then they can... If they bring out a land, Beanstalk Giant, they could just kill us. They need something with six mana. Or six, uh... Very interesting. Well, we're just dead next turn anyway. <laughs> if we do not draw, um, an Elspeth Conqueror's death here, or, Doom, or even Doom Foretold wouldn't work at this point. Because they can just sacrifice their Love Struck Beast to the Doom Foretold, and then still have two big Terror of the Peaks. All right, so that's six damage to us. Okay. We are going to bring this out. I know. That is not enough. One, two, three, four. Five. No attacks. That one, I guess. It really doesn't matter. Okay. Definitely need an Elspeth Conqueror's death. Yep. Oh, that's just it, right? Yeah, that's just it. Boo. Terror of the Peaks, man. Terror of the Peaks is a nasty card. This is pretty good. Removal. Good Dorian targets. We don't have a red mana source, but we do have a golden egg. I think that's all right. Up against Gert Del Pozo. Ooh, the rest of the Dream Den. Ooh, okay. Very interesting. So Luros Enchantments is what this is. All that glitters. So glass casket immediately, thank you very much. Alright. That one. Another hateful idol on. And a kite sail freebooter, so that's our Skyclave apparition, fortunately. Oh, wait, can they not? Non creature. So, Skyclave apparition. So we can't, actually, fortunately, because we didn't <laughs> break line pathway. Ugh. All right, so we're gonna, should we Golden Egg or Birth of Miletus? I think we Golden Egg. Okay, another Sky Clay Apparition, that's good. Good for us. Athemia, sure. Like, like some serious, uh, aggro here. We're gonna save Elspeth Conqueror's death. Okay, now we absolutely have to do white. Remember, we need double white, friend. Alright. Then we can Skyclave Apparition the Ephemia, I guess? Oh my goodness, a Hallowed Priest. You're a jerk. Okay. This does hurt a little bit, but, you know, we get a Skyclave Apparition. We do Birth of Miletus, then we Skyclave Apparition. Or the Ephemia, I guess? Maybe the Hallowed Priest. Do it for the Ephemia. Okay, they're getting their Luros. 
So we can Elspeth conquers death. Luris, I guess? That's four, five, six. That's a lot. Get a wall. Help us with stuff. We have our golden egg. We're gonna take um two, three. We're gonna take three. We might want to actually crack our egg here. So we'll just not do anything. If they draw something that <clears throat> enchants one of their creatures, we, we're going to need our egg, pretty much. Here's your brute. Okay. Cannot block that. Okay, here, here. And crack the egg. Alright. So... We can Archon of Sun's Grace and Birth of Miletus, which will really be problematic for them. Because of how much life gain we can get out of that. No text. The next turn we can Yorion and cause a lot of trouble for them. I'll see it's actually a problem. It's a wee bit of a problem. Okay. Excellent. Good call. Good card. Good draw. Omen of the Forge. Kill the Luros. <laughs> Good. We wanted to see. Get out of here. I don't like this because the mana is super awkward. But other than that, it's not bad. Right, so if we want to play a Skyclave Apparition on turn three, we have to play both the needle both pathways as white. Which means we don't have access to black mana. But I'm gonna keep it. Because our black mana, you know, is pretty high. Or a chance of drawing a black mana. Or like a fabled passage or something along those lines. So okay, but let's hope that we draw the right things. So they're mulling into six. Good. Good for us. Hopefully we draw that black or white mana source. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Deck, don't fail me now. There we go. We did it. Uh, but we are going to play this as white for now. So that we can Skyclave Apparition next turn if we need to. We're up against Sultai. Always a scary color combination. Sultai. Wari Runes. Alright. Alright. One, two, three. We can bring Yorion into our hand. That would obviously mean that we'd have to discard something. Which is probably not wise. So I'm, I'm just gonna pass. I'm just gonna pass. They probably have some sort of counterspell in their hand. Which means that we need all of the resources we can possibly get. Wait for them to cast something and then Skyclave Apparition it. Birth of Melanus, I guess. 
I want to counter that. They're obviously a counter spell deck. They're just sitting on nothing, doing nothing. Sitting on nothing, doing nothing. Which I suppose is okay for us because hopefully we win the late game. That is the goal. The goal is to win the late game. Whenever I see blue on the other side of the table and they're not doing anything, always makes me worried. Always makes me quite worried. So we could just do for told. Which I suppose we'll do. If to counter it. If not, we get a creature, draw a card, they lose two life, and they lose a card. So either way, they're losing a card here. We're going to force them to lose a card whether they counter it or whether they don't. They do get to decide. They lose a counter spell. It's fine. We just need to actually start drawing things. Things that we can do. Alright, there's something that we can do. That's good. And we can do that while also bringing Yorion into our hands. And they're still not doing anything. Which is like, alright. I can't hear that. You don't. Alright. So now, we attack you for two. See what happens. Yes, anything. You don't. We cast our golden egg. We draw a card. And we cast a Doom Foretold, I guess. Are we Doom Foretold here? <laughs> I mean, we don't have to. We don't have to do anything. They're not doing anything. So we don't have to do anything. I suppose that's how it works, right? They might just have a fistful of counter spells. We have them on a nine turn clock, everybody. Get there eventually, right? Okay. I suppose that's fine. And we'll play an Archon of Sun's Grace, I guess. <laughs> Not much else to do. And turn. You're gonna kill it? I mean, you are a control deck, right? Okay. I'm like super nervous. I'm super nervous for like no reason. They're just not doing anything. They have a fistful of hands. A uh, fistful of hands. They have a, fist, a fistful of cards. As do we. I suppose I shouldn't be super nervous because I do have a good fistful of cards. And they're not doing anything. We're not doing anything. They're taking damage, so like, whatever, I guess, right? Maybe we just doom foretold, but I don't think we even do. I think we just wait for them to do something. Which they're not. They're not doing anything. I'm like super nervous. Hopefully they just have lands. Just a handful of lands. Ashiok. Okay, there's something. Finally. There is little as exquisite. Sure. The shadows awaken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we can actually start doing stuff.
We have another Jewari Ruins. Okay. Alright. So, now it's my turn. Now we do Foretold. And there should be no way that they can counter this. And we Elspeth's Nightmare. Their Nightmare. And there should be no way that they can counter either of them. And hopefully they don't have a flash thing that they can bring into play to uh, sacrifice to Doom Foretold. That would make me sad. Though they probably do. Then we'll have to Elspeth Conquers Death, Ashiok, and they'll probably counter it. Do that. We forced their hand. And it was an Ashiok. So, they might be able to flash something in, they can't. Excellent. And then we get to actually see what's in their hand, which uh, will make me very happy. <laughs> we'll finally, like, relieve some of that anxiety. Know exactly what it is that we are dealing with. Maybe it's just Demir control. With Zagoth Triomes? Triomes? I am shaking, I am so nervous. <laughs> I don't normally play on the ladder, so I don't really- I'm not very used to coming up against card uh, decks like this. All creatures and planeswalkers with a converted mana cost three or less from the battlefield. And from graveyards, which is nothing, right? It's just my- like, that was, like, an awful thing to play. It's all weird to me. Seems a little weird to me. Okay. So, egg dies first. Bye, egg. Okay. <laughs> so, that will kill our Yorion. Last casket is fine. I don't want our R come back. I think I'm just gonna do this. Honestly. That was kind of silly. But I want to draw a card. I want to draw a card and I want to get things and I don't want to sacrifice all my other things. Honestly. <laughs> do you like my, uh, do you like my pants? <laughs> My sister-in-law got them for me. <laughs> I'm all business on top, but below it's just pleasure. Okay. You don't have to think too hard about that, by the way. All right. So let's get the goods. So yeah, they're all like creature control, which makes me happy. I am super happy to know what their hand is now. It takes a load off my shoulders. Are they gonna kill? They can't. They can. Well, I mean, they can. All right. Cool. See you know what they got? They're gonna shadows verdict here. I don't mind if they do. Go to my skyclave apparition. They get a two-two, but whatever. We can glass casket that two-two. When you play on the ladder, man, sometimes these games go long. People thinking very long and hard about what it is that they want to do. Alright. Land! Land, land, and more land. 
Exile your graveyard friend. Golden egg. Well, glass casket. This thing. Another glass casket. That's excellent. That one. You want a murderous rider, my tutu? You want a murderous rider, my tutu? <laughs> Of course you don't. You're saving it for Myurion. Um, and I'm just gonna save Myurion. Like, there's no reason for us to cast it. We've had them on a four-turn clock still. And if they play any of this stuff, then they're just in, a, in for a bad time. Wouldn't mind having my Arcana Sun's Grace back, though. I really wouldn't. And then Elspeth conquers death. I need to save it for, like, another Ashiok or whatever. Whatever shenanigans they might actually have. Yes. Okay. Moment of the Forge. Good. I don't, I don't see any re we have no reason to cast any of this stuff. We're just- we'll just keep it. Keep it until we need to cast it. Alright, that's the sun again. Hello, sun. We don't need to play any of this stuff. We have to force them to play it. And that's- that's it. And now they can't actually kill our Yorion right away. Good for us. Okay, they can actually kill our Yorion right away. There we go. Searching for an answer. Alright. Uh, so we can do both of these, which is awesome. We'll do that one. Boop, boop, and boop. This one. They don't have a board wipe, then well, F you. Yep. There we go. That one. Yep. 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 Alright, friend. Ball's in your court. Do you have a board wipe? You don't. Cool. Alright. That last game was super long, but it was worth it because we beat control decks. That was Mardu Yorion Doom. Um, it's very strong. It's just a really strong deck. The reason why I like it so much is because it's an unusual archetype. Yorion itself is not arc is not unusual, and Yorion Doom Foretold is not unusual, but to make it Mardu, even if it's just for splashing Omen of the Forge, is enough to make me smile. Because usually it's like Esper, you know? So just switching up the color types that you play with is enough to, to make me really happy. Because it adds that element of surprise. It's not just making hap making me happy as pl for playing something that is unusual to play does make me happy, but that's not the only reason that I, you know, play these things. I mean, it kind of is, but there's another element that adds to competitive playing. If you play something that people don't usually see very often, then they haven't built their deck around it, they don't know how to play around it, usually, uh, they, they might, so they might make mistakes, they might not know exactly what to expect, they won't play cards, you know, knowing certain things. Uh, about what to expect from their opponent's deck because the bl the best players play their opponent's deck, right? They don't just play their deck. They play their opponent's deck. So you know what to expect from your opponent's deck. That's why we never played anything like we in the last in the last um the last match we didn't play any of the cards in our hand because we knew we were playing against control. So it could have been countered and even if um you know we were just waiting, we were basically waiting to pounce. We had to wait for them to play. We got some very small stuff out in the field. 
that they didn't want a counter because they thought that it was beneath them or whatever. Maybe they didn't have the counters for it. They only had like Jawari's disruption or whatever it's called. So you know that Jawari's disruption is a thing. So you keep up an extra mana on top of what else you want to play so that you can play around those kind of counter spells. And then when you have stuff on the board, you don't play anything else out. You wait for them to play and make a play because they have to. If they don't do anything and you have, you know, a uh, Omen of the Sun and you have a couple creatures out, then they have to respond to that or they will just eventually die, right? So you force them to tap their mana, allowing you to play all of the cards in your hand. And then you and then you just pounce on them. And that is how you beat control decks, basically, as a mid-range, as a mid-range or other control deck. That is how you beat a control deck. Um, you force them to make bad choices. So anyway, that was a long explanation as to why I enjoy playing decks like this and why I decided to play this one on the ladder. I hope you guys enjoyed, you guys and gals enjoyed watching me play this deck. I definitely enjoyed playing it for you and until the next time that we meet, good luck in all of your games. Yep.